Hello my friends and welcome back to a continuing blind let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies for the PS5. My name is A Flip This Bird, this is your story of channel and today we're here in Tournament Academy, the third slash fourth case of the game. And the mock trial has become a real trial. And our friend, Juniper Woods, who was who was, um, are the, uh, the accused in the first trial is now the accused in the third slash fourth trial. So, yeah, it seems to be repeating itself. I don't know if I'm a fan of that, but let's see how it turns out, shall we? I hope you all having a wonderful, fantastic day today as we rock out to Clavier's music. I like Clavier, he's cool. Why are you here? So, what are you doing here, Prosecutor Gavin? I'm here for the same reason as your boss. To give a lecture in the training seminar. So, so he's the famous prosecutor they invited. And I have another crucial role to play. The governors are getting back together for a one time special performance. Even though you guys disbanded? Which was a shame, by the way. I mean, really. Yeah, I know how much you adored our music half for head. Anyway, I studied abroad in Germany to get my badge early, but I did graduate from here. Wait, so that performance Junie mentioned? I see you've already heard about that. One student representative was selected to sing with us on stage. And the stars were supposed to look like these tomorrow. Stage plans for school festival. Coasted by a school festival committee. Two big banners and a pair of wicked statues. This is just an illustration, but it's not half bad. I like how he's like dancing in the background. He got he's like, like objection. Yeah, look, you got the uh, the Gavinier banner with the uh, with the um the the legal banner. Wicked statues. Wait, are those supposed to be you and Mr. Wright? So that statue that was broken, that was his statue. Bingo for line. And, uh, and they are uh, so big and magnificent too. What a terrible waste. But the worst part of this whole thing is my long awaited reunion with my mentor never came to pass. Wait, don't tell me your mentor was Professor Cort. She was the one who taught me how to think about the law. Cossack Sport. Oh, he looks angry. I don't blame him. So, Constance Court was your professor at the academy. She may have taught the judge a course, but she had a huge impact on me. She was fond of saying the end is only justified through proper means. She would tolerate dishonesty and always revered what was right beyond all else. I can feel prosecutor Gavin's sadness. Oh no, I think I'm gonna cry. Huh. Oh, by the way, um, another weird thing about this case is this case is starring Athena. And I say that's weird because case number one uh, was basically Apollo's case. Case two. Well, either way, we've had like we've had every single person involved at least in uh, the pro the protagonist role. <laughs> And we got the DLC, of course. Athena, are you tearing up? Though I can't blame you. Prosecutor to Gavin owes a lot of who he is to Professor Court. Exactly. So, as you can see, they are both doing the purpose, so to speak, yeah. Now, let's rock this place hard. Huh? I don't follow. Let's rock, I mean, rock what? Forget a bit, you have for head. I said I'd help you explain the mock trial. We're going to reprise it right here in the lecture hall. It might help us catch a killer.
October 24th, Themis Legal Academy, third floor lecture hall. And, and it's interesting because when I loaded this game, uh, it was called the Mock Mock Trial. I didn't really understand what it meant by that, but now I understand. Mock Trial Reenactment. Oh, Rose! Right, the stage is ready, and you have for head. Are you ready to vok? Um, no, the defense is totally not ready to vok. You saw the actual mock trial earlier, right? Just relax, you'll do fine. Besides, they have the script right here. Junie's masterpiece, the ones everyone was talking about? Yeah, and there's only one in existence. I borrowed it, if you will. Now, for line, we'll need you to play the part of the defendant and judge as per the script. Okay, got it. I've only read the case outline so far. I don't know how it actually turns out, so I'll treat this like a prosecuting a real case. You, air for head, uh, will play the part of a fledging lawyer. Of all well, that you were, uh, <laughs> born to play. Just be natural, just be yourself, and it'll be fine. All the evidence is also here with us. They have everything they need to reprise the mock trial. Tabian, let's get started. Defendant slash Judge Athena Sex is psyched and ready to rock. <laughs> Court is now in session for a reenactment of the mock trial. Or what I like to call the muck muck trial. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. now I understand, uh huh? Yeah, a double mockery, perhaps. But the trial is still a trial. Achtung, baby! It's no hard bad. Let's walk! Aw, oh, can we just, like, take it easy today, please? It may just be a mock of a mock, but there's only one day to complete. You play to win. So remember, each time I catch you slacking off, I'm holding a contempt of court. Great. A judge that voices her own objections and abuses her own judicial powers? We created a monster. <laughs> Summary of the facts. Now then, prosecutor Gavin, your opening statement, if you please. You got it, for line judge. -a. Our case is set in a school very much like this one. The victim, a professor, female. The defendant, an art kind of member, also female. Oh me, oh my, I I'm innocent, innocent, I tell you. Well, that's some seriously bad acting, for line. <laughs> Anyway, the victim's party was discovered in the middle of the card. Here's a shot of the crime scene. Ironically, it was Professor Cart who posed as a corpse. Hair for head. How did the Mactrayel participants react to this photo? Mr. Newman was surprised at what Mr. Court was wearing. He reacted with, oh, the green sweatsuit. That's not exactly what I would pick to focus on, so why would he care about that? Ah, too much of a fledging to know what's supported that one in any case. Both in the Mactayel and the actual case, Professor Cart was wearing a sweatsuit. Moving right along. Hey, wait a sec! The body was discovered in the same area as the mock case, although there was a stage. And her hands were different. Plus, the murder weapon and the arrow and the lack of blood are also the same. That's right. And therein lies the significance of this mock mock trial. So let's get vacking it hard, just like that. Defense's argument. Before the crime occurred, the defendant was to meet with the victim in the crowd. Um, ahem, let's see here. When I arrived at a meeting place, I found the professor with an arrow in her stomach. But, 
It wasn't me. I didn't kill her. You don't have to ham it up like that, Athena. It's called getting into character here for head. Don't be such a vet blanket. Right. Um, let's see here. Oh, then you. Oh, yeah, then you said. A frail cord used her bare hands to stab her professor with an arrow? I don't think so. At the time of the murder, a male student was seen. Holding a bow in the archery club room, which has a clear view of the quad. He shot the arrow into the victim before my client even got there. Nine nine air for head. That fine svega does not suit you in the last. Order, order, order. Especially you, Mr. Justice. Me? But like, I, I was just trying to get into, you know, it like, like Mr. Yorker said. Oh, why are you blaming me? Prosecution's rebuttal. So, the victim was shot from the archery club room just before the meeting took place. Hence, the defendant could not be the killer. That seems to be the defense's assertion. But for Prosecutor Gavin, do you have any objections? The autopsy report notes that the edges of the victim's wound were unusually ragged. Could such physical trauma possibly result from an arrow shot from a bow? Nine. I believe the victim was appelled with the arrow by hand post-mortem. In short, the real murder weapon was not the arrow at all. When Robin was prosecuted, he had a tough time determining the real murder weapon. Well, he's just a student of Roma art, but I am the real deal, the headliner, so to speak. The true murder weapon was most likely by the all the all that was left in the art room. An all? What's that? Er, I mean, hmm, an all, you say? What th that be? It's the kind of tool used for poking holes in paper, wood, and other materials. That That's that, um, that thing magic that we saw, the, uh, the, the pokey thing. It's kind of like an ice pick cut. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Like an ice pick. Yeah, that's kind of what it's like. Exactly. Thank you, Clavier. I have a photo here, if you're interested. Like, gross. It's all bloodied up to the handle. Please tell me it's just paint. Most likely, for nine. Pretty realistic, ya. Yeah. Let's pretend it's via blood for now. The defendant's prints were lifted from the murder weapon. Furthermore, traces of the victim's blood were discovered in the art room. That's where I believe the murder actually took place. So, the question now is, how did the body get from the art room to the stage? How the body was moved. The murder took place in the third floor art room, but the body was found in the quad. It must have been quite true moving the body all that way. No, not at all. There's a maintenance area in storehouse right outside the art room. And a cart used to carry balls around was found there. Oh, I think I've seen one of those before, but that's a pretty big one. A jumbo, yeah? Big enough to fit a person or a body in it. The defendant dropped the body from the art room window, then moved it with the cart. That is how a high school girl could easily move a body all by herself. You don't say! Objection! A body dropped from three stories up? Which shows signs of massive blood force trauma. Objection! That may be true, but... You fail to account for the large high jump mart in the storehouse. A body dropped onto such a mart would show no signs of blood force trauma. Yikes! It's almost scary how similar this whole case is to the mock trial proceedings. Quite the crafty killer. In an attempt to cast suspicion on the archery club, they moved the body to the card where it is an easy shot from the club room. Then the killer faked the murder weapon by inserting an arrow into the all star wound. Sounds like he has only high praise for June's script. 
Were there any further arguments from the defense? Nope. It seemed like the teacher was playing the judge was satisfied too. Time for the finale then. Your verdict, if you please, Fraulein Jaja. Huh? Alright, that's me. Very well. This court finds the defendant, Juniper Woods. Wait a second. Even if this is just a mock trial of a mock trial, I don't want to declare Juni guilty. Yeah, perhaps that's such a, such a good idea. Let's end our mock mock trial here. Besides, it's about time that I get back to my investigation. Thanks, you two. That little one through the mock trial put up quite a few things. Mock trial script added to the court record. Achtung, baby! The prosecution's already got the witness sized up, too. That was quick. Prosecutor Blackwell's almost too good. You're sure in a helpful mood today, Prosecutor Gavin. Well, like I said, I just want to catch forever killed Professor Pop. And there's no reason for me to start butting heads with you two. Anyway, I won't say goodbye, as I'm sure I'll be seeing you later. Bye, Gavin. I like Gavin, he's cool. I always thought prosecutors were all a rather scary bunch. But prosecutor Gavin seems pretty nice. Yeah, he's not so bad as prosecutors go. I think that was supposed to be one of uh, Dina's voices anyway. We should get be back to investigate too. We don't have nearly enough information yet. And we also have to tell Mr. Wright that we accepted to his case. Right, looks like we have a work cut out for us. All right. Any ideas? The most prominent feature of this case is how close it resembles the script. That makes it a tough one because we have to have a firm understanding of them both. No sweat, we can reenact the mock trial as many times as we want by reading the script. I'll check it out in the court back and I'll it to my later. Good, I bet the script and the mock trial are going to be the same piece of real trial. Make sure you know them inside and out. Yes, sir, Mr. Justice! Mr. Justice? Careful, I could get used to that. <laughs> the investigation. Apollo, any advice on how to investigate this case? Oh, uh, start by interviewing people about the basic facts. Interview people, got it. Hey, you there. What can you tell me about the... Whoa, hold on, Athena. The trial's tomorrow, so try to limit the people some relation to the case. Okay, got it. Limit the interview pool. Right. You might also want to take it down a notch. Otherwise, you'll be dead by tomorrow. You want her to come down? At a time like this? Junior's fate rests in my hands. I have to win this one. Oh, let's uh, take a look at that. A body with a protruding arrow was found in the quad, but the murder weapon wasn't all. The arrow was inserted as a ruse. The actual murder scene was the art room where traces of blood were found on the floor. The body was dropped from the third floor art room to the maintenance floor below. A mat was laid out to cushion the fall. A ball cart from the storehouse was then used to move the body to the stage. Archery club's room was a good view of the quad. The body was made to move to the quad to make it look like an archery club member had shot the victim with an arrow. All Bywood School Festival funds get from hardware store. Error. If I borrow one from the Archie Club, it could give away part of the script's plot. TBD. Sweatsuit. Victim's outfit will be a red one for the prosecutor course. That's interesting. Victim's outfit will be a red sweatsuit. But yet... Okay, we don't have a picture, but you know the picture constantly showed um, her in a... Red in a, um, a green suit. So there's a contradiction there already. Hope I remember that later. October 24th, Demis Legal Academy. First floor hall. Ah, Mr. Wright. I heard they arrested your friend, Juniper. Yeah. Detective Fulbright just took her in. I refuse to believe that one of our students is capable of murder! We must prove innocence by any means necessary! The end justifies the means! Quite literally, when your name is Means, 
What do you mean, and justifies the means? Well, I profess the means, I always say what I mean, and mean what I say, by all means! All right, our esteemed academy! We train our students to produce meaningful results! You believe in Jennifer's innocence, do you not? Of course I do. Jenny, when I heard it fly. Creep. So creepy. Precisely! We have justice on our side! The only thing, the only thing we need are results! Well, it is the height of folly to endanger your client by failing to pursue all means possible! Um, sure, I want to prove her innocence, but I, I don't like the sound of that unjustifies the means part, and I could have swore he changed his voice too. Man, he, he, he must be a really weird guy. Yeah, I, I don't remember the voice I gave him. I just remember it was like a, oh, no, no, type voice. I, I don't remember anything else. Well, you are still young and idealistic. So no wonder you fail to see the wisdom therein. There is but one thing to do now. I must personally take up Juniper's defense. You're going to take her case, Professor Means. Oh, I might be a professor, but I'm so licensed to practice law. In fact, I haven't even battled Professor Gordon well in court. No kidding? So you guys were rivals or something? No, nothing of the sort. She was an esteemed colleague at the academy and in court. Really? Hmm. How convenient would it be if the person who did the murder defended the person accused of the murder and then he lost? Because he wanted to lose. Because he's the one who actually did it. Oh, am I getting super suspicious already? Oh. Oh, that's, that's, that is some 4D chess right there. You see, both Professor Gore and I graduated from the academy at the top of our class. Well, I bet they both used to really bring it. Now, if you would excuse me, I best go discuss the case with Jennifer. Professor Means, please wait. I didn't want to say anything, but an Apollo and I already agreed to take her case. It's true. Jennifer is counting on us to prove her innocence. Really now? You do? And when were you planning on telling me? So sorry, boss. I, I know we should have asked first, but, uh... <laughs> Relax. Your friend was just hauled away in front of your eyes. Sometimes you just have to make snap decisions. And I think you made the right one. Oh, wonderful! Very well, Athena Sykes! Let me just ask you one thing! As a lawyer, what is it that you treasure beyond all else? <laughs> That's an easy one, Professor. Seeking justice for my clients. What a wonderful answer! Juniper must be overjoyed to have a friend such as you! As a professor! I too shall do whatever I may to help her! And if you decide to take the end justifies the means strategy, come see me at once! Let's hope it never comes to that. Now, if you would excuse me! Yeah, I have no idea what voice I gave him before. I'm pretty sure it was something like that. It may not totally be like that. I may be totally off. <laughs> it just what happens sometimes. Like when I see a person, I give him a voice. But if they're like an enigma, such as Aristotle over here, I, I mean, it's it's just one of those things where it, it doesn't always be consistent. Well, time's a wasting. You better start investigating and fast. But first, how about I tell you everything I know so far? That'd be great. Yes, please. About the murder. Have you learned anything new about the case? Actually, I ran into Prosecutor Gavin, and he told me something interesting. Seems the murder took place in the art room. There's traces of a large pool of blood there. So the police believe the body was moved from there to the stage. What? Really? Just like the mock trial again? The police are searching the art room, but whether they'll find anything, well... Well, what? Come to think of it. 
Let's do our own crime scene investigation before it starts getting crowded around here. Huh? Are we even allowed to do that? It's no big deal, as long as we leave it exactly like we found it. Plus, no, never mind. Now, where was I again? But there's really no need to talk about it right here and right now. I want you two to find out for yourselves. Rumor about the academy. So, were you shocked by your conversation with Professor Means? Oh, um, I guess so. Uh, actually, that was pretty shocking. The Dark Age of the Law. I'm sure you've heard those words before. Sure, a number of times. Prosecutors filed false charges and lawyers fight back by fabricating evidence. There's a lot of going around these days. But the question is, how is it related to the case at hand? Training students to produce results. That is the school's policy. Well, that in and of itself isn't a bad thing. Right. As long as those results come by fair and honest means. Oh, but what was it that Professor Means said? The end justifies the means? To survive the Dark Age of Law, you must use any means necessary. Fabrication of evidence and false charges are unavoidable in the quest for results. That's what they're preaching here at Themis Legal Academy. But, 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 what'll happen to the legal system results are all that matter anymore? Ha ha ha, relax. It's just a rumor. I'd take it with a grain of salt if I were you. Oh, that's a relief. He had me going there for a minute. Wait a second. What did Mr. Wright examine the victim's body for a reason? Maybe he was worried someone might actually tamper with the evidence. I think that about wraps up what I know so far. The fact that this case closely resembled Miss Woods' script is obviously important. Knowing that, you should probably try and identify what's the same and what's different. Okay, I'll try to talk to as many people as I can on campus. I already seen this one. Actually, remember to hold circle this time. Listen, Athena. There's a certain amount of etiquette involved in presenting evidence. You're free to shove this or that into my face, but... Please get my attention first or give me some sort of warning. <laughs> In other words, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> oh. Things like that sure scream out school days, don't they? Were you involved in any extracurricular activities like school papers or mock trials? Nah, that wasn't my thing. I was an art major. Really? An art major? Then how did you become a famous attorney? It's kind of complicated. And when I say kind of, I mean really, really complicated. <laughs> oh, you must really mean it. I'm picking up a lot of complex emotions in his voice. I, I should have known that. I'm having present Phoenix with Demon's Hailed Extra. I should have known that about uh, him being an art student because didn't we have a case with uh, Dahlia? And, uh, Phoenix, you know, back when they were in school, right? Could have swore that was a thing. I'm surprised. I really thought there would be something for the mock trial script. Alright, let's, uh, let, let's make sure there's no, oh, any dialogue. And then it looks like we should probably move to the question mark area. So let's go there. October 24th, Themis Legal Academy. Maintenance hall, or area. So this is the maintenance area. Let's see. During the muck muck trial, Prescott Gavin said that the art room is right here on the third floor. And that the body was dropped there from onto a high mat from the storehouse. Right, and then he claimed that the body was transferred to the stage in a ball cart. And then, hmm, there's someone else here. Hey, it's Robin. Whoa! You scared the crowd out of me! Yikes, right back at you. So what are you doing out here? I'm working out so that I can become strong enough to save Jennifer! 
But I'm so worked up! My training voice is almost working on the teams! Oh, right. That got that you, like, got arrested. So you're second yourself up to rescue, huh? Oh, yeah! Kiss! I'm a manly as a manly man! That's why I work out with my manly brace! Except that I hear some discord in that manly immense voice of yours. I don't mean to be rude, but can you talk without shouting? Sorry! I'll try not to shout so much! If at all possible, that is! Which is not at all possible, <laughs> by the sound of it. Um, so do you mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. D's lawyer? No problem! Ask away! Keep on coming, man! Ouch, my ears ache already. Robin Newman. Robin, could you tell me a little more about yourself? You wanna know more about me? I'm a second rate member of the uh, Fine Arts Club! Fine Arts Club? Looks like that book and party of plaster. Maybe this is the sort, the sort of noise that we heard. Hmm, there were supposedly two statues on the stage. I seem to recall hearing that a co-ed from a fine art club had made them. Two big banners and a pair of wicked statues. This is an illustration, but it's not our bad. Wicked statues? Wait, are they supposed to be you and Mr. Wright? Bingo for line. And they were so big and magnificent, uh, too. What a terrible waste. Say, did you create those sage statues by any chance? You bet I did! Hold them! Put my blood sweat in the thing, man! It must have been terrible seeing them all smashed up like that. Nah! I couldn't face the rest of the if I let someone like that get me down. What do you mean? Professor the court was a fine arts club advisor. She was all about truth and beauty, man. She always said the only good result is truth. That end. Only lawyers who seek the truth of legitimate means produce worthwhile results. Yes, I'm totally on your guy's side. She must have been an incredible woman. Oh, yeesh, and you call me loud when I practice my cores of steel. <laughs> about the murder. Oh, man! Why do I have to take the prosecutor course? I mean, how am I supposed to say Juniper Woods if I'm trying to be a prosecutor? Don't worry, I'll clear Juniper's name, you'll see. The three of us had a dream, so we make it happen together. Prosecutor, lawyer, and judge. The three of us would be fair and have honest trails. The dark age of the law? Ha! Man, we're going to put a nail in his coffin, man. Wow, you guys swore to do that? But no! The super school rule had to ruin it. School rule? Which one? Anyone with a prior conviction, no matter how my defense, they won't. They won't be allowed to graduate from this stupid holy than now at school! Okay, so who has the conviction? By the way, I just noticed a cat hanging up on top of the building on the right. Oh, it's so adorable. A tough legal academy with even tougher roles. Jenny will never become a judge unless I can prove her innocence. And if I fail, the three of them will never realize their dream. It's like somebody put pressure on my pressure. Whoa! Check out the beach! What do you think? Nice and shiny, huh? Yeah, it's awesome! If the painting ever starts to peel or gets all bait up, let me fix it for you. Really? Thanks. No, 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 no. I have some primo clay and glaze at the uh, ready, just in case. Wait, what does clay have to do with my badge? Whoa! Did you make that? Let me fire it in the killing for you. Just give it to me and I'll take care of the rest. I think I'll pass on the killing firing this time. Phew, that's a bullet there. Ah, the paper! So, Robin, is this Article 2? The other that article has been gone in for the three of us for some reason. It's been nothing but trashy articles like this as long as I can remember. Hmm, maybe the author just wants your attention. No way, man! The venom in those articles are way beyond that. Hmm, I wonder. Oh, 
Whoa, deja vu, man. It's like I can almost taste my new victory again. But no, the final showdown was kids because of the murder. This topic sure seems to take a run now. I hope it doesn't come between you two guys. You kidding? Friendship. It's like a diamond, only tiff. It's like a powder keg before a spark. It's like the calm before the storm. In other words, it's under a lot of pressure and ready to blow at any moment. All right, I think we're all done here. October 24, Themis Legal Academy. Third floor lecture hall. Look, this you. Hey, you! Ah, it's you too. Do you want something? Did you find anything? You said you were going to do some investigating on your own. Nope, nothing yet. I'm afraid he's not looking very good for Juniper. You don't really think Juniper could have done something like this, do you? Only the author and the victim knew the contents of the script. Both the stage and the art room were in the exact same state as described therein. Nobody could mimic the crime like that unless they already read the script. Or wrote it. But, but. Look, Professor Means is better able to handle this than any you two. So just lead it to him. There it is again. I'm picking up some discord in his voice. Now, what's interesting is if Means did it. He would have read the script, right? Although there is something going on between these three. It reminds, again, this, this case reminds me a lot of Master Detective Archive's rain code. How there was some sort of like plot between the students, you know? Hugh O'Connor. I don't know if I get his name either. Hugh O'Connor. Hugh O'Connor. Hugh O'Connor. You, uh... Oh, Connor. Connor. So he's a con man? Connor? He's a huge con man? He's a fake? Could that be it? Don't tell me, because that sounds like a spoiler. I'm not entirely sure yet, though. Hugh, would you mind telling me a little bit about yourself? And then what about Robin Newman? Rob and the new man. Huh. So basically he's a fake. He's not real. He's he's sort of like this guy, a con man. The both of them are just big phonies. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. I'm six foot one inches under this uniform. I'm hundred percent lean muscle. My grades are outstanding. I'm on the east of the archery cliff. Needs to say. I never miss my mark. Dang. Oh, and I'm incredibly humble too. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah, we can see that. <laughs> How can you even say that with a straight face? Those around me called me a genius, but I pay them no mind. But when it comes to tests, I always get 100%. So I suppose it's only natural for them to say that I'm a genius. But as I said before, pay them no mind. I heard you the first time. But well, what about the mock trial? It sounded like you were about to lose to Robin. Heh. <laughs> That's a very good reason for that. You see, right before the mock trial started, I saw the body. You saw the body? Right. And I was so distraught that I basically handed Robin a victory. Why don't you say anything? Dude, would you mind telling us a little more about that? Discovering the body. A body has been discovered! Pew, pew, pew! Flightless, you made that joke yesterday. I know, but it's still good, okay? Ah, right before the mock trial, the campus was empty. Everyone was here in the lecture hall. Your attention, Blush. This is an announcement from the mock trial committee. The mock trial will begin shortly. All students and faculty, please proceed at once to the lecture hall. That's right. There was that announcement, and everyone came in here. The only exceptions were the mock trial participants. Juniper, Robin, and I went in our personal dressing rooms next door. 
Why, your own personal dressing rooms? That's total VIP treatment. Well, actually, they're for student teacher meetings. They don't even have windows. Yeah, the two waited patiently in the rooms, but that's not my style. So I headed over to the archery range on the other side of the quad. I did some meditation while waiting. That's the best way to relax. But then, just before the mock trial was to start, I headed back toward the main building. As I walked across the quad, I passed in front of the stage. So that's when he saw the body? Right. It was quite a shock. As much as I hate to admit it, my legs were shaking. Could have easily beaten Robin if I hadn't been for that. Wait, hold it right there. You went through with the mock trial even though you had just discovered a body? Why did you tell anyone? I mean, we're talking about someone getting killed here. Again, I like it when, I like when the protagonists are on the same page, because that's the exact question I asked. I think I know why. Was it because of this? Ah, where'd you get that? So this article in the Themis Herald is true. The winner of the mock trial would get to make his confession to Juni. Ah, right. If I poured the body I found, the whole thing would be called off. He really wanted to win, not bad? Bad enough to ignore a dead body? Sorry, but that's not normal. Or could their love for Juni really be that strong? Thanks for sharing that important piece of information with us. It may prove useful at tomorrow's trial. Good. Because that's all I had to say about the matter. Thanks, and don't worry, we'll prove Juniper's innocence, you'll see. Heh. <laughs> Can't say you two inspire much confidence. Okay, Athena, what next? Heh, <laughs> your attorney's badge looks brand new. That just shows how inexperienced and useless you are. Oh, yeah? Well, where's your badge, mister? Well, when you get to your badge, it'll be nice to shiny too. Heh, <laughs> you mouth breathers just don't get it, do you? My badge will be a symbol of my genius, so the moment I get it... It will be chipped, bent, and worn as if it's been through a thousand courtroom battles. I really don't like this guy. He's like some hipster doofus. I really don't like this guy. Is it just me, or is this your name here? Yeah, that's my name, but how should I know what it's doing there? But being that the whole canvas looks up to me, I'm not surprised to find my name mentioned here and there. And I'm not surprised he said that, being the narcissist he is. Yeah, huh? Well, that's from the archer clip. We let the school use it for the mock trial. Never figured it would end up being used like it was. Of course, the real murder weapon isn't an arrow at all. I know, but the fact remains it was used in this whole insidious plot. But a mouth breather like you could possibly answer. Will you please stop calling us mouth breathers? I don't like that. I don't like that phrase. It just bugs me. I'm not even sure I know what it really means, but it bugs me. You see, archery is a sport that demands advanced mental focus. And the killer's actions have done harm to its image. I know exactly what you mean, except for that mouth breather remark. Well, let's hope that someday you will, because it won't be, could be any more self-evident. I like him less and less every time he opens his mouth. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that one, Athena. Dang is on the same page. So you really declare that you confess to Junior if you won the mock trial? Because he's definitely not the shy type. Heh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's just the genius that is me. My thoughts and actions are on a whole other level from you mouth breathers. No, it's your affinity that's on a whole other level. <laughs> Random jump from some mouth breather. That makes me think I want to see that. <laughs> the least you can do is make it more interesting like by telling me how cool I am. What is this guy at the kiss? I really don't like this guy. Get it. This is your way of mocking my defeat. You like shoving people's shame in their faces. Well, that's your modus operandi. No, that wasn't my attention. Besides, you never actually defeated. Oh, I suppose you're right. Or is this just a trick it did to provoke me? That wasn't my attention either. Then what was your attention? I know. Try to toy with my emotions. Wow, this guy can't take being humbled, old country style. Jeez, this guy really ticks me off. And that's, I mean, um, if you got, if you, you remember the guy who, with the pigeon, you know, with the like pigeon feet at you, 
And I said, really, I don't like this guy in that entire part of the trial. I just remember was bogged down because of that character. And if it wasn't for that character, the trial may have actually been pretty decent. I'm getting those vibes from this guy. I mean, all he has to do is start throwing pages at me and he would be no different from the pigeon guy. And because of that, every single time he's on screen, I'm going to go, why is he here? And it's just going to bring down the overall mood of the game. Uh, I mean, it, it's like, I can't stand this guy. October 24th, Demon's Legal Academy Outdoor Stage. I really hope he doesn't ruin the case by his actions and attitude because, like I said, if you don't like a character, you're not going to want to be anywhere near the character. And if they get on screen and they get screen time, you're just going to want to fast forward. So I like watching wrestling. I like watching wrestling. Wrestling is great. But there's some people who just don't care about. And you feel like just fast forwarding every time they open their mouth or something because you're just so annoyed by them. You just want them to be gone. That's how I kind of feel about this guy so far. Every single time he's on screen, I just want to fast forward through his section because I can't stand him. And it's not like I can't stand him because he's a bad, uh, he's a he's a bad a bad villain. The problem is he's just a bad person, and I don't know if he's guilty or innocent, but he's a total jerk. And I could use more powerful words, but I'm not going to. I thought the area was cordoned off. Hey, the police are discussing something over there. Oh, I know. I'll just quietly stick over there for a listen. Here it goes. Ah, Athena, watch where you're... Hands off? This side up? Aye? Ouch. Who put this stupid box here? Wait. Eek! Uh, Apollo, a box, there's... What now? That there's... That there, there's someone or... Go! Something inside! Don't let it be a snake! Or Jack Cockroach. Jack Cockroach busted out of this. I'm turning the game off and I'm just walking away. The heck? Is that Juniper? Like, I can tell by the, um, by the, uh, by the dress and, like, the, the, the clothes because it's gray. What the heck? Fragile heart. Wow. You more, it's just been my cover. What the? There really is someone inside. That someone is me. Medium Scatterbutt. Okay, that's weird. I'm, and I'm a senior in the judge course. Okay, maybe it's not Juniper. Although it could be just the uniform. Boy, what's with the box? It's the fate of life. Okay, so obviously she's not Juniper. I don't know why I keep giving her Juniper's voice. But yeah, she's not Juniper. So uh, what voice are we gonna give her? No. I mean, I don't have any idea on this one. It's the fate of we who live in the shadows. There's a very good reason why none may see my face by the light of day. Wait, if you're taking the judge course, did you write a mock trial script too? You really want to see my skip that bad? Well, you better watch out. Read it without my permission. And you wish you hadn't. Who cares? I'm sure it was rejected for a good reason. Miriam Scuttlebutt. Oh, so you're starting to be a judge too? You must be cosplayed with Juniper. Are you afraid of hers? Juniper, sh sure. She's my friend. That's why I'm gathering info. Now, tell me all you know. You know, for tomorrow's trial. For tomorrow's trial? What are you talking about? I'm going to take the stand, naturally. 
So, so, um, the, so, stop it. The witness for the prosecution is some widow in a cardboard box. Cack, cack. This disguise is how I get my scoops. But you're right, it's me. So tell me everything you know for Juniper's sake. Wait a second, Miriam? Repeat what you just said. A lawyer with brains as bad as his ears. Poor Juniper. I'm taking the stand tomorrow. Tell me everything you know for Juniper's sake. Clear enough for you this time. The heck? I thought so. Athena, my voice is reacting. Really? That means a lie already? That was quick. It's not a lot to look at. See, they gotta be the eyes or the hands. Okay, I didn't see anything in the eyes. Could be the sweat glands going left and right. There. She clenched her fist when she mentioned Juniper's name. Gotcha. gotcha. That's strange. You suddenly tightened your grip when you said, for Juniper's sake. It's like you're subconsciously tensed up because you're lying. Gak, gak. What are you talking about? Why did I ever lie? Okay then, let me ask you this. Why were you selected as a witness? That's an easy one. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Themis Herald. So you're the one who wrote that article. Yeah, she wrote that article. I know everything there is to know about Compass. Even the darkest of secrets. Editor chief, huh? Well, that's pretty impressive. S yeah, well, it's a lonely one woman operation. I do it all myself, from reporting to editing to publishing. Still impressed. I'm a perfect storm of journalism because I bring it all to the table. S and this is the evidence. Here. An extra edition of the Themis Herald, published to coincide with the mock trial. Themis Herald extra added to the court record, an extra edition of the school paper that covers the mock trial. Thanks, Miriam. You've revealed who you truly are. Someone who's never had your best interest in mind. What? Are you questioning our friendship? Look, you may want to answer, but no one can do, because what you're saying conflicts with this piece of evidence. Take that! That's the Themis Herald, the paper I publish. What about it? Are you really that defend that dense? This article is full of malicious lies about Juni. It's definitely not something a true friend of hers would write. Exactly. Cack, cack! You got it all wrong. Another staff member wrote that one. I don't think so, Miriam. You even just said it to yourself a moment ago. It's a one woman operation. Or did you forget already? Oh. Cack, 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 cack. If you just given me the info you have. Stupid pawn. Juniper's. Just using you. Now, I want the truth, Minium. 
You hide in a box in order to collect gossip for your sissy paper, isn't that right? You're not really friends with Juniper, are you? No da. Seize the target of my scoops and my readers domain dirt. Extra, extra. The dirty little secret of this squeaky clean student council president. Dirty little secret? Alright, what are you planning to say in court, huh? I'm a witness to a part in the crime. I'm going to tell it all in a shocking expose. The end justifies the means. That's my brand of tell all journalism. The end justifies the means? Wait a second. In this dark age of the law, many of us embrace Professor Means' methods, even future judges. I've even adopted an end justifies the means brand of journalism, which includes tape recorders secretly hidden all over our campus, secretly recording every last word without anyone being any the wiser. Doesn't she realize that she's totally illegal? <laughs> and one of them was at the scene of the crime, the art room. You put a tape recorder in the art room? What did it record? You wanna know? You really, really wanna know? Yes, please. That's so nice of you two. Like I'd really tell you now. The big scoop comes out to court tomorrow. Tisk, you're so mean, Miriam. According to my evidence, a fatal fees, sir, had opened between the three of them. Who? Juni, Hewitt, and Robin? And what do you mean by fatal fissure? A writ in the trio. Juniper, Hugh, and Robin used to be the best of friends. Used to be? They still seem to get along fine to me. I did set some discord, though. You don't know anything. Professor Means has his followers, and Professor Court had hers. The influence is inescapable. Are you implying that one of them adheres to the extreme idea that you and Professor Means have? But why would anyone follow that philosophy? How could you possibly understand? You're new around here. Miriam, why don't you feel better if you came out of the dark and into the light? Sss, I can see fine in here. You'll be the ones seeing the light in court tomorrow. Then you'll realize how guilty Juniper Woods really is. Ugh, we're going to have to cross-examine her tomorrow. I don't know where to start. Well, let's at least take her whatever we can today. You're right. Let's see what else we can find out. Well, I think I talked to everyone who has somehow linked to the case. Okay, maybe it's about time we wrapped up our investigation. Oh, wait. We haven't met with Junie yet. Yeah, you're right. Let's head over to the detention center. Do I have time to talk to Junie? Ugh, we're getting close here. October 24th, detention center. Visitor's room. Tina, thank you so much for coming. She called me Tina, like she used to. Maybe she's finally letting her guard down. The script. Junie, the crimes are folding exactly like your script. Any idea what's going on here? We wanted to make it fair, so the script was kept secret until the day of the mock trial. And the only people who knew the details were Professor Court and I. Hmm, nothing we haven't heard already so far. However... Yes, what is it, Junie? Well, there was this one article in the school paper. You mean this one? It's more like a tabloid piece of newspaper article if you ask me. I've been worried that the trial would wreck the friendship between Robin, Hugh, and me. She wants to stay friends, but both of the guys are hoping to take it to the next level. Oh, the passion of high school drama. Wish I could have experienced it. And I know I shouldn't have, but... I revised the script to favor the prosecution. 
But Professor Quirt noticed it immediately and changed it back. Ah, so if Robin had won, he wouldn't have been able to confess his love to Junie. Well, that would have kept the trio's relationship the same. Never knew Junie would be so devious. Sorry, I guess my personal problems probably won't be of any help at court, huh? You never know. Help often comes from the most unexpected places. Thanks, Juniper. The all. I was wondering about the all that you had on you when you were arrested. Detective, Detective Fulbright, found this in the suspect's pocket. Hmm, my idea is there's blood on this. But that's evidence we made for the mock trial. A mock trial? Never heard of such a thing, but it's fishy to me, real fishy. It was the murder weapon from the mock trial. Professor Quartz and I were prepping it in the art room until the day before the trial. I didn't even realize I still had it on me until I was arrested. Then we nothing to worry about. There should be any way to link it to the crime. Yeah, because it wasn't the, the blood on it isn't real blood. Still, that blood red color on the all bothers me. Wasn't it just paint or something? I mean, I was looking at it from pretty far away, but it probably was just paint. But that's what bothers me. It wasn't on the all when we were prepping it yesterday. Really? It wasn't? And how when did it get there? Well, before the mock trial began, I showed Dina and Mr. Wright to the waiting room. Then I went back to my dressing room to get the trial props we were going to use. That's when I found the art room key and the awl with what looked like blood on it. A key and the awl? Professor Court normally has the art room key since she's the fine arts club advisor. And since that key was there in the dressing room, I thought she was the one who had painted the all to look like it had blood on it. After all, she always insists that pops should be realistic, so... The all suddenly shows up on the day of the trial with what looks like blood on it. I have a really bad feeling about this. Me too. Let's not jump the gun on this. Mock trial prep work. You and Professor Court were always busy preparing for the mock trial together yesterday, right? Was that the last time that you saw her? Yes, I left school at around 6 p.m. Did you notice anything different about her? No, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. She looked and acted the same as always. I would have never guessed she'd end up like this. It looks like we're about out of time. Thank you for coming to see me. We'll do anything we can to prove you innocent tomorrow. I know, and I believe in you, Athena. Well, I should go now. Bye. Is she gonna be alright? She's like a shadow of the girl we met back at the academy. The thingy I the journey I knew was always like that. A little weak and sickly. But the fact that she's lifted her facade shows that she trusts us. Even still. What is it? Well, when Juni and her two friends were talking about their friendship. I said some discord in our hearts. Seriously? Yeah, but it was really faint. I might have been mistaken. There's no reason to doubt their friendship. Is there? I guess that's at the heart of the case, isn't it? Don't worry. Everything will be fine. You and Juniper are friends, right? You know that friend I mentioned to you earlier? Well, get this. Whenever somebody's troubling one of us, the other can just feel it. That's real friendship. I suppose you're right. Might as well forget about that and concentrate on the trial. Yep, tomorrow's a big day. Let's sort out what we know so far. Okay. The victim, Professor Katz's court, was murdered in the art room on the third floor. Then her body was moved to the outdoor stage of the quad. Also, the location where we found the body was just as the mock trial described. I wish those were the only similarities they shared. What do you mean? What I mean is the script in this case are exactly the same in almost every respect. So it follows that the actual trial may very well unfold like the mock trial did. Oh no. The mock trial ended right before the prosecution was about to win. Well, that's not gonna happen. This time, Ginny will be declared not guilty. Of course, I intend to get our results the honest way. We can do this. We'll be fine. After all, I have Apollo and he's the king of being fine. <laughs> 
All right, my dear friends. Well, my name is the Flatless Bird. This is your story based gaming channel. And this is our continued blind let's play Ace Attorney. Dual Destinies. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazingly awesome day today. And we'll be back very soon with day one of the trial. Oh boy, I don't have a good feeling about this, but let's see how it goes. Until next time, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.